welcome guys to another episode on dynamic programming and today we are going to be solving dpv 6.7 palindromic subsequence so the problem statement of palindromic subsequence is to find the longest palindromic subsequence and just to remind palindromes are a sequence of characters where the first and the last are the same and if you read it forwards and backwards the string looks the same <clears throat> so the general mechanism of finding such palindromes is you compare if it's a string i to j you compare i with j and if they're the same then uh, you basically follow on till you find the long longest uh, but there's a difference between subsequences and substrings subsequences are non-contiguous uh, sequence of characters it doesn't mean that you know every character in this if I find a palindromic sequence of five, it doesn't mean that all those five characters are together. They may be scattered over this and you may skip some characters, but you will find that the longest sequence back and forth is of length five in that case. So <clears throat> with that being said, I guess let's look at the recurrence relation that can solve this dynamic programming solution given this um, idea that we compare I with J. So in general, the recurrence is that if you want to compute the longest palindromic sequence over any string, and if you pick characters from I to J in that uh, string to create this substring, then Lij represents the palind longest palindromic subsequence length found in Lij. Now Lij can be broken down into three comparisons. The first is you compare I character at I and character at J. And if they are equal, then it's essentially the palindrome inside those characters, which is I plus one to J minus one and plus two, because these two are already part of the subsequence. Now, if that is not true, then you uh, cannot just skip I and J. You must try to see if, because the subsequence, it may just start here and end at J minus one, or it may start at I plus one and J. So you essentially take the max of those two possibilities and in case i is not equal to character at i is not equal to character at j then you take the max of those two um, previous solutions now another thing to keep in mind is that the longest palindromic subsequence of the same character is one which means that if you take a look at i and i that um, by definition is going to be one and every other solution is based on top of that. So now to visualize all this and how we approach the palindromic uh, solution uh, and implement this equation, let's look at the matrix. So in this matrix, we have set it up as usual. Um, it's set up to go from I to J, and this is our solution called Lij. Now, if you look at it, we can pre-fill this diagonal. The main diagonal is one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, and six, six in this example. And that is of width zero, which means that a character in itself, the width of the palindromic sequence in, in we consider it to be zero. And if you do that, then what happens is that you, you get one along this diagonal because it's one, one, and two to two, three to three. It's just one character and palindromic length is one. And the other thing is that we will look at this, um, the, um, the loops that are required to solve this. But in general, the way these loops will work is that you start with the width on the outside and the width goes from one character all the way to n minus one characters here. And so one, you set up the outer loop as the width of the palindromes, that diagonal that you're trying to fill. And the inner goes from one to n minus w that is the first starting position, which is the Lij. So this is the second one is for the i. And then the j is basically, if you sum these two, then you get the j value. And then you compute Lij um, uh, for that starting and ending point. Now, if you follow this recipe, then the way this recipe fills up is that <clears throat> it will walk along this diagonal. And in fact, this diagonal is pre-filled because w is zero. So it'll start with the next diagonal. So it'll start here and it'll fill this diagonal, and then it'll fill this diagonal, and then it'll fill that diagonal, and so on and so on till it finishes up here, and that is your answer, because that is the full length from one to six 
in this case and that is the answer and the palindromic length w equals 5 which is the n minus 1 which is the last um, of this loop so um, in a sense that is both the recurrence and how you uh, implement this recurrence in this diagonal form and this is very similar to the previous example in dpv 6.6 .6 or matrix chain multiply you walk down this diagonal so one thing to clearly understand is this loop implementation how width is used on the outside and you do i and j and then you do the compute uh, i and j for the recurrence which is mentioned here and uh, so that's one the other thing i wanted to mention is that before we try to look at the order of this recurrence we have to understand that every point in this is three comparisons remember that we checked i and j first and then if i and j are matched then you know what to do if they are not matched then you form another uh, i plus one to j or uh, you know i and j minus one you form two other uh, solutions that have already been pre-computed and you use them to form the next solution so in a sense that coming back to the recurrence you have three possible solutions at any given point in this matrix as you walk through this you have potentially three computations and the the good news is that you only compare the last one here and if the last one which is i and j match then it's one otherwise it's two more which are already done before you so those solutions pick from this previously solved set of solutions and therefore that's how the dynamic programming solution produces higher efficiencies now having said that if we walk down this and this is our solution then what is the order of this we know that every stage we only computed finite number of uh, lookups so therefore the order there does not the number of computations in each step does not matter because it's three in this case and the size of this solution is order n squared over two which is order n squared because it's only the upper diagonal of this matrix so that's it guys the order is n squared and we have covered the recurrence relationship and how to fill this matrix so that you can arrive at the final answer which is in this case l i j equals l1 through 6 and once you get this answer up here this is your answer and you are done so hopefully this um, answer was clear and you enjoyed the solution if you have any questions or comments please leave them below if you like the solution give me a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll bring you more dynamic programming solutions in the future and uh, until next time take care and bye bye